at eCampus Ontario. My name is Sarah Suknanen. I am the coordinator for the Open Library here at eCampus Ontario. I'm also joined by my lovely colleague, Laura Luapa, who will be helping moderate the chat. We'd like to start this session in a land acknowledgement. The offices of eCampus Ontario, located in the downtown Toronto area, are within the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. We acknowledge and thank the diverse Indigenous people whose footsteps have, currently do, and will continue to mark this territory. And we also ask that you consider the caretakers of the lands and waters on which you are situated. I am coming to you as a settler here on land covered by Treaty 13 and the Williams Treaties, where I have the honor to work and play. Feel free to share your own land acknowledgement in the chat. So the agenda we have today for this workshop, uh, we're just gonna go over an OER overview. I'm sure if you have come uh, to one of our workshops where you've heard it before, but just in case, we're just gonna go over it quickly. Uh, we're gonna go over the basics of using the Open li Library Catalog, and then we'll do a demonstration of how to search for some resources. Then we'll have a Q&A session. So all that out of the way, let's talk about OERs. It's probably good to define the term just to make sure we're all on the same page. So a definition that gets thrown out a lot is one put forth by David Wiley, one of the big names in the Open Content Initiative. The terms open content and open educational resources describe any copyrightable that is either in the public domain or licensed in a manner that provides everyone with free and perpetual permission to engage in the five R activities, retain, revise, remix, reuse, and redistribute. So we got a whole other workshop dedicated to those basics on the five R activities, which you're welcome to check out in the recording of our YouTube channel. You're welcome to discover the basics in that workshop or email us with any questions. But I don't want to uh, get bogged down with the basics right now, but just remember that you can remix and reuse and redistribute material depending on the licensing associated with the OER. What an OER can look like is fast. It doesn't have to look like just a common textbook. We have a lot of different OERs in the Open Library Catalog. We've got a list of files and media types that continues to expand from simulations to assessments to common cartridge cor courses or podcasts and textbooks or textbooks on how to make podcasts, video recordings, interactive activities, and VRs. OER is not just a book. Really, there's much more to an OER than a format. So what can you do with an OER? What makes OERs great is that there is many ways that you can use an OER. The five R's of OERs consists the different ways you can use an OER. They consist of retaining, which mean to make, own, and control copy of a resource you find in our catalog. Revise, meaning you can edit, adapt, and modify the resource. Remix, you can combine your ideas with other existing material to create something new. Reuse, you can use an original work, revise or remix copy of your resource and make it public, for example, in a presentation. And finally, redistribute, which means you can share copies of your work, whether it is an original work or remix resource to others in your community. Through our open library catalog, you are able to search through our available resources on our OL website. To do this, you can use the top search bar to search for titles, authors, and keywords of materials you are interested in. On the left-hand side, we have filters you can use to narrow down your search. You can filter by subjects, additional features, like if the resource has ancillary material or accessibility statements, item types, which means resources that are a textbook, instructional object, or primary resource, language, educational level, media format. Uh, for example, are you looking for PDFs, common cartridges or video files, and license types. You also have the ability to filter by date if you're looking for resources published recently and by institutional affiliation. 
So with that out of the way, we are going to start the demo. Just give me one moment. So this is our open library catalog. We are going to do some basic searches, and then we're going to find some uh, three resources by playing with the filters on the left-hand side. So very common thing we can do is you're gonna search by title. So if we search like this, we have the resource here. We can also search by author. So let me think of an author by the top of my head. We then can find the resources that have been created by that author. So if I click here, you will see here that the author is here. Another way to sort of search around in the catalog if you're not too sure uh, of the title or author that you're looking for, you can search by keywords. So for example, let's just do psychology. If you're looking for resources in psychology, you can then peruse our catalog to see what is available with that uh, subject title. And you can even add to that as well. So if I say in sociology, it will then add to that as well. So the first resource we are going to look for, we're going to look by using the filters on the side. So first we're gonna search by subject. That is a very common way to search for uh, resources you may be interested in. On the side right here, these are the main subject uh, keywords or vocabulary that we use. But if you see up here on the side with the arrow, we have some sub subject categories as well. So if you wanna even get more granular, you can search by clicking here. So for example, I'm going to click on nursing. From here, we can see the uh, resources that we have that do with the subject of nursing. And I'm just gonna click on this one as an example. Here is a common, uh, front end interface of what a resource will look like. So I just wanna go over some of the key points of the front page of resources that you will see or even your own resources as well. So first, I want you to look at right here, the license. This is very important uh, because it will tell you how you can use the resource rather to share, to adapt, to remix. Uh, also a side note, if you see here that the license is an OCL license, this means that you are going to have to register uh, for a login because this uh, license is for Ontario institutions. And so you will have to create a, a, a login that shows that and you can create it right here. The next thing I wanna show is that view details. So. Over here, you can see the different uh, details and metadata about the resource. So the author, the editor, the subjects um, that it falls under. So like we were looking before, it's under health sciences and nursing. But if, for example, we also clicked medicine or uh, science, it would also be there as well. Some keywords, we have anatomy uh, that's adding to the subject keywords as well table of contents, the language, the date published. Um, if you have an institution affiliation, this would be right here. The type of resource it is, so we can see that it's a book, a reference material, and a textbook. Uh, the uh, course title that this book has been made and used for is right here. And then other some other informations like when it was last updated. If we look down here, some resources will have a read online function, meaning that it has another uh, area that it resides. Primarily, it will be a URL or a press book. 
So for example, if we press here, we can see that this is a press book where you can also view the resource and you can also download uh, files from this point here too as well. Here, you can see where you can download and then the files available on the side. And then if you have a login, you can save this resource to a list, sort of like a wish list. And over here, you can use this to embed the resource uh, into uh, an LMS, let's say. Now we're gonna get a little bit more sort of granular with the filters. So I'm going to reset, putting to all subjects, and then I'm going to go to business, business management. And let's say for business management, I am looking for a resource that has ancillary resources. By clicking this, it will filter down to business resources that have supplementary material or ancillary resources. And when you click on the resource, so we're going to click on leading innovation, you will see now that it has another button that has these uh, resources as well. And when we click on it, some of them you will be able to download directly, but others, depending on the author's request, will sort of make you email the open library first to access these things, uh, primarily test banks. Uh, this is just so that students can get access to those test banks if you want to, if the educator wants to use them. So some you will be able to download directly, but some you will be required to email us and then we will supply those to you. The last one I want to show is if you are looking for resources by file type. So what I mean by this, let's say we are looking for videos. You know, you want something a little bit more interactive. You don't want just a traditional textbook. So what I'm going to search by is, let's see, public service and then public administration. So I want a video that has to do with public admin. I'm going to look down and as I look down, you can see things like, the, like I said, the additional features, item types, so like learning resources, primary resources, the language, educational level, and here where I want to be is media format. If I click video, I will have one resource that shows up. Just click this here. And then when I click download, I will see the video files on the side. So if you are looking for something very specific, uh, I would recommend using this filter, especially if you're looking at things like common cartridges, videos, or even VR uh, files. As I go down, you can also see the license types once I clear this. It's important if you want to sort of look at all of the resources to sort of set back to this here, all subjects, all video file, I mean, all file types, just so that you can have the full um, catalog. But then once I do that, you can see all of the different licenses. So that is it for my demonstration. We can now go to the Q&A section and then we can even uh, try searching for in the catalog uh, right now as well. So does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns? We can also play around the catalog if you like.
I think I see one question. So for the question here, I see, oh, sorry, Laura, can you stop the recording?